Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. In this video, I'm rebuilding a 4.3 liter V6. And um, this engine has some differences that I don't typically come across. And uh, so those are cues to me that I need to look into this uh, particular engine and find out more about it. So what I've determined is that this engine is a 2007 and later LU3, uh, RPO code LU3. And it does have differences that you would uh, differences from a typical 4.3 that you would see from the 1990s. So the first thing that caught my eye was um, these rod bolts here. These are not uh, typically on a rod. You will have a bolt sticking up and then a nut that screws into that, and you torque the nut down on the bolt for your final torque, say 42 foot pounds or whatever. These particular rods are not like that. They have a bolt that goes through the through the rod with no nut, so you are tightening the bolt. You're torquing the bolt. So I needed the torque specifications for those bolts, and I did an internet search and I found one source that told me that. Um, it's a long story, but it said basically that this is a new design and it's supposed to be torqued to 15 foot-pounds plus 100 degrees using an angle torque gauge. Well, um, I did that. I went ahead and torqued them 15 foot-pounds and then torqued them additional 100 degrees, and it just didn't feel right. Um, in my experience with engines, when I'm tightening bolts, I can tell that uh, things are either getting too loose or getting too tight or whatever. So... Um, I didn't have a good, I'll call it spidey sense about those bolts. So I um, uh, I had already done it and I decided to go back and redo it. Just didn't feel right about it. So um, went back and um, did some more research and found that the uh, Gen 4 LS rods, let me see if I can show you one over here. So this rod here is a Gen 4, let me see if it's got the, yes. So you can tell Gen 4 is because it's got the clip in there for the piston pin. So this is a Gen 4 LS rod, and those bolts are torqued to 15 foot-pounds plus 85 degrees, not 100. And since um, on the 4.3 over there, since I'd already tightened them up to 100 foot-pounds, excuse me, 100 degrees, and if, that, if that's too tight, then you get into what's called um, uh, plastic stretching. You have elastic stretching and plastic stretching, and I'll go into I'll do another video later on what plastic stretching, how plastic and electric, plastic and elastic stretching differ, but. You don't want to get it if you get into plastic stretching you've damaged the bolt and you got to replace it so since i felt like i damaged a couple of those bolts in that 4.3 i came back and uh stole some of these uh rod bolts out of this or some of my ls engine bolts or excuse me ls engine rods and uh compared them they were identical the bolts looked identical so i went ahead and used them to repair this v this 4.3 v6 over here but um in the process what i did was uh uh, uh, loosened up these bolts, took them back out, swapped in the LS bolts, and then this time I tightened, tightened them to 15 foot pounds plus another 85 degrees, and it felt a lot better. Didn't feel like it was too tight, too loose, felt about right. So, um, so that was uh, one thing I caught uh, caught on to this 4.3 that I had to come back and fix just because I didn't have a good feeling. So um, another thing I'll notice I've noticed is that um, this this 4.3 has some uh, this has a threaded in core plug. It's a fairly large brass plug right here, and it threads into that hole. And then there, your drain plug threads into this hole. That's something that's unique for this particular block. Also, um, I don't think if there's anything else. Um, so one other thing that's caught my eye is this this uh, rear cover seal or rear rear uh, rear rear main seal housing here let me show you why so looking at the oil pan this is the oil pan that comes off that came off this motor it's, it's a little bit different than the other oil pan so the uh this flange here doesn't have these little dots like the, i'll show you the other one in a second but it doesn't have these dots locating dots for the uh for the gasket up front here you've got a narrow slot for this gasket to fit in and then it comes around sorry the battery died or battery's trying to die so, and then back here, you've got this slot here. If you notice, notice how narrow that slot is for this gasket to fit in. And by the way, this is a different gasket part number than you would find for, you say, your typical 1996 to 98 uh, Fortech V6s. And let me show you this. So this is the oil pan off of 98 to, uh, excuse me, 95, 96 to 98 uh, Vortec. You see that there's like a circle there, circle here, circle there, circle there, so forth. So this is a different pan and it uses a different gasket. But if you'll notice, this gap back here is a pretty wide gap. So you'll notice that immediately that's a different gap. You know, I mean, I see a different uh, gasket for this oil pan. So having said that, so then I've, I put the uh, gasket in the in the new oil pan and it's this uh, gasket has this fairly narrow strip right here. And then I looked at the 
rear main seal hell, rear main rear main seal housing. And you'll notice it's not a narrow slot, it's a pretty wide gap right here. This this entire surface right here is pretty wide. So I got to thinking something doesn't feel right about that. Uh, I was thinking maybe I have the wrong rear seal housing. I, when I build motors, when I tear a motor down, I throw all the parts in one big, like you see these tubs right here. I throw all the parts for that particular customer's engine in that big tub. And it, it doesn't go out of that tub until I'm ready to put it back on. And uh, sort of like I, I clean stuff right before I put it on. So um, I fetched this particular part out of this customer's box. And I've already installed it, obviously, but um, this this wide gap here just doesn't seem to jive with the narrow seal uh, that that gasket um, has. So it made me start thinking that maybe I misplaced or maybe I got accidentally swapped out the part for another customer by accident or whatever. So um, that made me stop and I went and did some research on the internet. And um, so such a, my normal source for marine engine parts, especially on uh, boat engines, is marineengine.com. And so the serial number of this particular block, and by the way, the serial number tag has been eat up with acid, but I recorded it before I took it apart. This engine is 1A, 1A321001. So looking up that serial number um, on marineengine.com, it showed this engine was a V8. And immediately, or the, the diagrams of the schematics, the whatever you're going to call it, three-dimensional diagrams were showing that it's a V8. And I knew, okay, that's wrong. This, this, they got this serial number all screwed up. So I didn't trust that information, so I abandoned that search. So I then went and um, started searching eBay to see if I could find, um, say, uh, I know that this is a 2011 engine. I found a 2008 uh, rear main seal housing on eBay, and it showed me what the part number was on that part. And it, lo and behold, it turns out to match this part number. It's one five, it's uh, one two five 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 seven six eight, I believe. And that part number's down there, and it matched the 2008. So, and in the picture of, on eBay, the 2008 the 2008 um, housing was this wide. So as it turns out, I do have the right part. Um, I, but I'm, I'm not saying it's a waste of time. But when I the point of, when I build engines, if I don't feel that something is right, I'll go and re research it and, and make sure it's right before I proceed. And that's what happened in this case. So so far, the both the ride bolts and the this uh, rear housing here were. Um, issues that I wanted to resolve before I moved on. So it looks like this is the right uh, housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start fitting this oil panel here with the gasket and um, get it sealed up. Um, so if you notice, I guess this is a wide, a fairly wide flange and so is that. There's no, there's no, uh, what do you call a slot for that gasket to fit in here on this surface here. So maybe that's what, maybe that's about the design. So we'll go ahead and put the oil pan on and I'll put it on now with confidence so I'm doing the right thing and then I'll, once I get the oil pan on, I can flip this over and start putting the top end together. So um, thanks for watching my videos and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, stay tuned for more.